Welcome to Mr. Giant Reacts and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant and we will be watching here what Canadian monkeys go through at boot camp. Now, uh, two people have suggested that I watch this because I watched a, a video on uh, American versus Canadian uh, cops and uh, they said that the Canadian cops are structured differently and the monkeys is just one sort of division of a whole collection of of different uh, uh, police services that they have in Canada. But we want to see what it takes to become a Mountie. Let's YouTube and Sib Simmer and check this out here. Nunez, in what year did we become the Royal Canadian Mounted Police? 1920. Really? That's what you're going to give me? That's as loud as you can be? 1920. My goodness. He's I nervous. The day you have to yell at someone, Stop, police, drop the knife! because they're coming at you with an edged weapon. There's no whispering. There's no room for meek and mild in this job. and traditions that are steeped in Canadian history. Every year, about 1,000 cadets graduate from the academy before joining the 20,000 RCMP officers serving across the country. On a bitterly cold week in December, we spent five days at the academy. We saw different troops at various stages of the 26-week training program. Okay. On day one, a new troop is welcomed by the Academy's commanding officer. Everybody wants you to be successful. We're incredibly happy that you're finally sitting in these seats as members of Troop 29, and we want you to be successful, but we're not going to do it for you. You have to do it for yourselves. The application process, which includes a polygraph test, can take about eight months. Wow. Everybody took a year out of your life to finally get here. We sometimes see cadets go home after 24 hours. It takes probably a couple of weeks to get used to the routine. So give it at least a couple of weeks. Work hard, have some fun, and good luck. Are we a kinder police organization? That is a comment that we actually verbally say out loud now. We're in the service industry. We're out there to serve the Canadian public. So if we create that type of environment, we're hopeful that the cadets will remember that and when they are out in their various communities, All right. that they will continue to work with the communities as they were trained. All right. Training happens here so. at RCMP Academy Depot Division. Located in Regina, Saskatchewan, about 100 miles north of the U.S. border. It's a region of Canada known as the Prairie, where during our visit to Regina, sustained winds, combined with the low temperature, made it consistently feel about negative 25 degrees Ooh. Fahrenheit. No, 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 no. The starting salary for a constable in the RCMP is about $53,000 a year. After three years, it increases to about 86,000. Applicants must be at least 19 years old and willing to relocate anywhere in Canada, including remote provinces like Yukon and Nunavut. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police as we know it today was founded in 1920. The Canadian Rockies, the legendary mounties, are the symbol of law and order in this vast domain. Oh wow, that is cool. Mounties, the RCMP isn't a mounted police force. And horses are only used for ceremonial events. Oh. We're not what you see in the movies from Hollywood. 
people see the red jackets, pointy hats on black horses, and they think that's what the RCMP is. But we're police officers first and foremost. And I think that's probably the biggest misconception. <laughs> the reality is policing back roads and small towns by yourself. We are a police force. That's the biggest message. Now, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't one that thought that uh, I just didn't look at them as a police force. You know what I mean? I, I, I didn't see them as pulling people over and giving them tickets uh, or chasing people to urban areas and stuff like that. I, I didn't, but it's not because of Hollywood. I just didn't. They just seem so friendly. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, granted, where I'm from, policemen are usually uh, friendly too. Uh, they don't have any guns. You know, they, have, they, have, they used to have a nightstick. I don't even know if they still carry a nightstick. The last I heard, they were carrying pepper spray. But, uh, they just, and then the the, 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 the the scarlet tunic makes them so celebratory looking, you know what I mean? And of course, as the commander said, you know, they service, they're like service industry. They, they come to serve the people, make sure the people are safe and stuff like that. And apparently they push that very hard there. Now the eight months of uh, the testing and the stuff before you even get into the academy, that's a pretty stringent uh, uh, process compared to this country. Now, in my country, I know they, 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 they say they go to police school. I don't know the ins and outs about it, even though my grandfather was an inspector of police and my, grand, and my dad was a sergeant of police. I really didn't know what their training is like. I highly even doubted they trained them to use firearms because they never had one. My dad did, but it was his. It wasn't, you know. The only time they used, uh, had firearms when I was growing up was when they went to do parades, you know what I mean? But I like the fact that they have this stringent process to become among the police, and then they, 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 they're teaching them customer service per se or uh, you know so they, I bet they're really good at de-escalating stuff let's get back to the video here this is uh this is turning out to be quite interesting here thank you so much for uh, suggesting this starts here at depot I need to stand up during the rest for assault with a weapon where most of the training is focused on mastering police procedure practiced in realistic scenarios where cadets play the roles of both the officer and the suspect Anything that you do say to me can be used as evidence. Do you understand? Yeah, I just want you to know I messed up, but I didn't mean to. I'm not that type of person. Okay, good to know. Can I get a 1028 to 1029 pros on a Saskatchewan marker when ready? Good work, go ahead. We're trying to prepare them for the realities of policing. Do you have anything on you that could hurt me or you? Policing isn't an easy profession. We make the program such that they will be physically and mentally prepared. But they also have to have common sense, they have to know their powers of arrest, they have to know the law. So it's a real combination of two things that need to happen all at once. Male and female cadets train together at depot. and even face each other in police defensive tactics training, or PDT. <laughs> Obviously, in policing, we don't choose our opponent. We're not going to be always uh, be matched with a normal size like you would see in a sport of uh, boxing or MMA. Most of our cadets come here without any backgrounds at all. Some of them have never been involved in a fight, so it's very difficult for them to understand how to deal with a situation like that. Cadets are faced with additional disadvantages. Sometimes they're only allowed to use one hand or they're only allowed to use leg strikes. Another exercise requires one combatant to spin around in circles before the fight begins. No! <laughs> if you get into a fight with an opponent out there in the street, it could happen that you get hit in the head and that can create like some kind of dizziness, a little bit of a concussion type of uh, scenario. We want to make sure that they have this kind of understanding without putting them into a concussion, obviously, because we don't want them to yeah, that makes uh, sense. hurting themselves. But with punches flying, minor injuries do occur. Sometimes some things like that happen. We try to mitigate that as much as we can, so it's almost a good thing that he can feel that, so then if it happens in the field, he knows how to deal with it. In this scenario, cadets attempt to subdue an aggressive assailant. 
by handcuffs, but it's not easy. To make the scenario more challenging, cadets are matched up with assailants who are bigger and stronger than they are. Uh, uh, whose objective is to try and grab the gun and baton from the cadet's duty belt. The reason that we do this is basically to uh, allow the police officer to reassess the totality of that situation. And now that jeopardy has raised for the police officer, they should be able to reassess that situation. That is like communication is the big key here. They want to communicate with their partner and then come up with a new plan based on their risk assessment, which is always evolving. Nobody dies at depot. This is the place to make mistakes, because when police officers make mistakes, people get hurt. Some of the stuff they see and will see is not nice. We need to help prepare them for True. it physically and mentally. Being exposed to pepper spray is a common part of law enforcement training, and it's no different in the RCMP. We want them to get an appreciation for Whoa, pepper no. spray, so they Woo. understand essentially that it's painful, and so they understand that it works, it's effective, and that they can fight through it if they are exposed to OC spray themselves. They do uh, 50 jumping jacks, so we just want to get their heart rate up just to simulate as if they were in some sort of a physical altercation, perhaps. Uh, they then go into the actual chamber where it has been contaminated Ooh. with pepper spray. You've already gone 1019, it says just make the arrest. And uh, then they have to make an arrest on the subject inside that chamber, keeping their eyes open, being aware of their surroundings, and uh, fighting through that painful experience. But at depot, Cadets take it to another level. After being exposed, cadets exit the facility and perform an arrest in the freezing cold. Would you like to speak to a lawyer when we get back to the office? They probably barely notice the cold when they're out there. After, immediately after the exposure, it's only once that the effects have worn off that they realize it's actually cold outside. It actually will help somewhat with numbing that pain of the uh, yeah. once they get back into a warmer environment. For those of you who haven't been exposed to, to anything like that, I've been in uh, in situations where tear gas was thrown. Oh my goodness, you can't breathe. Your eyes are burning. It is the most terrifying thing I've ever been uh, through. Now, I know the, 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 the chemicals and stuff have changed over the years as to what they, uh, they use, but I'm telling you, man, eyes are burning and you can't breathe and you're running from where the tear gas is thrown to because, you know, you're trying to escape it and you cannot freaking breathe. I don't know if I could do that kind of training there, boy, but, you know, no, I don't know, man. No, no. You see, uh, yeah, you see TV shows and it's all the quote unquote glamorous stuff where they're in the bat in the bat in 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 the field and they're chasing people down. Stop police, you know what I mean? And they body slamming people and, and kneeling on the back and stuff like that, you know. And of course people who like that sort of a rough and tumble thing will think, Man, yeah, I could do that, I could do that. There's a lot more stuff going on there than you think. It is a hard job and even on a small island. It was, it was not, sometimes not a very pleasant uh, job to have. Let's get back to the video. Over there, like, can you hear me okay? You guys can you hear me okay? okay? Because the things that I say are so important. Cadets fire between 800 and 900 rounds during their 65 hours <coughs> of training on the firing range. Probably 15, 20% of the cadets that show up have some sort of firearms experience, whether that's pistol, shotgun, rifle, or hunting. We're able to take someone with absolutely no pistol or firearms experience and make them quite good shooters and successful through the program. So week two, they're actually issued their service pistol, Smith & Wesson 5946. That is their pistol. And it will follow them through their career until they so retire or move on to something else. Firearms is a very important skill set to have. And if the day ever comes that you actually need to rely on your pistol to protect a human life, it's going to be a situation where we hope that you're proficient and you're prepared for that day when it does come. I was here yesterday. I'm trying to make a living. Drop the knife, sir. You're always jacking me up. Okay, we're going to pause this scenario. Cadets interact with a video in which role players create a scenario that tests judgment. Sir, can I see your hands? how to de-escalate a threatening situation. 
The Judgment Simulation Room is also equipped with what's known as a shoot-back cannon, which fires projectiles at cadets. They can basically give them a little shot with the shoot-back cannon, and it will remind them to go use cover. So it only needs once or twice, and then they quickly get behind cover. Every cadet is required to pass the PAIR test. PAIR stands for Physical Ability Requirement Evaluation. We're going to run hard. Everyone's going to get superior today. Oh, yeah. It's used to determine a cadet's physical ability for duty. Ready. Go. Face yourself, The PAIR is the current job standard test that we use. It's the measure of success for fitness and physical ability when cadets uh, graduate from DECO. So if a cadet is unsuccessful at PAIR, then they will not graduate from our program. <coughs> the cadets will run six laps of an obstacle course that includes running over a set of stairs twice in each lap, as well as jumping over some lower hurdles and going over a three foot barrier, laying on the ground and getting up. So they go through that circuit six times and then they move into what we call the push pull station that replicates that altercation. And they need to push and maneuver a weight six times. The weight is 70 pounds. Three, five, zero. The standard for what we call a pass is 4 minutes and 45 seconds. In policing, the physical demands are unpredictable, and it's difficult to do your job well or safely if you are unfit. Cadets are also timed in scenario-specific training like this exercise, where the objective is to load up a truck bed with various life-saving supplies. Each item weighs about 50 pounds. Wow. The goal is to safely load the truck in less than two minutes. 202.9. Training moves outside when cadets work with a dog handler. That freezing weather, boy. Woo! This is Bailey. She was my partner as a police dog. I spent seven years on the road with her as a police dog. We were partners. She uh, goes on what are called uniform runs. It's supposed to simulate running with a dog handler, pursuing a suspect, or looking for a lost person. Come on, let's go! We end up going over a lot of fences when we're chasing bad guys. It's uh, just the nature of how our work is. To try and get a dog over a fence, the, our main concern is the safety of the dog. We don't want the dog getting hurt chasing somebody, and so there's uh, certain ways to get the dogs over the fence. They utilize their harness, so what we usually do is get one person at the top of the fence, sit on top of the fence, and then I hand the dog up to them. And their job is to make sure she doesn't come back over the fence or jump down the other side and hurt herself. We're lucky with Bailey. Bailey's very friendly and very easy to work around. Cadets use it as a bit of a learning tool to show them how to be around the dog and what the dog looks like when it's actually working. What a tremendous opportunity. A turning point for this troop. Cadets have to pass a rigorous inspection of their barracks, known in the RCMP as pits. Cadets lay out all components of their duty belt on their beds and stand by while an officer inspects all of their equipment <coughs> and personal belongings. What would you have done? Like how sacrificed their life for your belt? What would you have done to it? How they do present their pits and lay their pits is an extension of themselves and it does translate to other areas across the cadet training program. It is minus 25 right now Woo! here in a forge cap. You're out here not prepared for duty. This entire troop will be at learning assistance tomorrow morning at 7.30. Wear your fur cap and carry your hat here so you can wear it for class. What sets the RCMP apart is its uncompromising attention to detail. Which is on full display in the drill hall, where cadets spend hours practicing marching, maneuvers, and customs. <coughs> It's an extremely valuable component of training here because it teaches cadets that sense of discipline, um, self-control, and composure. You see a firecracker or something? Put your feet forward. It's about conditioning the mind. Simple commands, you respond. You see the threat, you respond. Even though it looks very ceremonial in nature, it's all connected back to oh. the police. The bottom oh. flap, all the way down here. Lower it, the bottom here. That's where it should be. Why are those things important in our uniform? Public perception of us. What happens if we have poor public perception? Lack of faith. 
It's not about buttons and zippers, and it's not about marching. Everything has a connection back to policing. Attention to detail in your uniform translates to looking for what's missing, looking for what might be evidence when you get out into the field. No, no, check this out. Here's a difference I was watching as you were talking about how they, how they look and stuff and the, the public perception of them and all of that. Now, let's take, for instance, if that's the way they look out in the field, spiffy and, you know, well put together and stuff like that. And that's how they are out there. Just imagine when you walk out here and you see uh, you see a policeman, he's got pepper spray, nightstick, glock, you know, and all and all this armament, like he's out for war, you know what I mean? I, I'll be honest with you. And not all of them have that, but you know, a lot of police forces here, uh, departments here are like completely uh, ward out is what I call it. You know what I mean? There's weapons everywhere. You know, it's, it's it's like I remember, like I said before in another video, when I first saw that, I was like, "Where's the war?" Because that's what it looks like. It was. It looks like they were coming out for war, and then when there's riots, they come out even more militarized. It's crazy. You know, they have like mini tanks and all kind of stuff like that. Comment down below. Does the Canadian police force any of their Mounties or the, the, the provincial forces or whatever they call them? Are they like militarized like that? Comment down below and, and let me know what you all think, what you, what's like where you are. Because I'm telling you, you walk on the street there, blah, 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 blah. I'm surprised they don't have grenades <laughs> in the belts too. Let's get back to the video here. Drill practice culminates in a ceremony known as the Sergeant Major's Parade. guest in attendance, a 28-year-old man with special needs named Matthew. He has come to the RCMP Depot Parade on Tuesdays for the past six years, and it's his like ultimate thing, this is what he looks most forward to, is being able to come here and have this relationship that he's developed with the drill unit. Oh, where's your hand? On the other hand? It's just tremendous, like they've just sort of taken him under their wing and he has his own uniform. You know, they made him an honorary cadet. Huh. Although the Mounties are known for their iconic scarlet tunic, this is the uniform you'll actually see a modern Mountie wearing on TV. Oh, wow. But the red surge remains a defining characteristic of the RCMP, used as the formal attire for ceremonial events. The uniform comes together here, where a team of more than 20 tailors alter the uniforms to the specific measurements of each cadet. We take them apart, we put them together, and do the alterations. We like to see uh, the smile on their faces when they come in and, you know, get seated. When they receive the tunics, they know that, you know, they're wearing a prestigious garments. The week before graduation, cadets attend what's known as the regimental dinner held in the officer's mess. It's a tradition that, according to the RCMP, media has not been allowed to attend before now. It exposes them to the importance <coughs> of our history. We adhere to some very old traditions that we've inherited from uh, the British Army and the Canadian Army that we've made our own. One seat at the table is left unoccupied to honor the memory of the more than 240 RCMP officers who have died in the line of duty. It's really a culmination of that family piece that we talk about right from the beginning, that building, that esprit de corps, sitting there together as the corps, celebrating the organization that they're just about to join. ceremony. This troop took their oaths in French. After taking the oaths, the cadets removed the epaulets from their uniforms, signifying that they're no longer cadets.
become members of the mounted police. They grow two inches and they look so proud. And their families and their friends when they see them are so proud of what they've achieved. Canadians trust the RCMP and have for a very long time. It's fragile and we have to make sure that we maintain that. No, that was quite interesting. You know, on a side note here, uh, it seems like the Mounties were formed to perform a service to the people. Now, what I have heard here, and I don't know how true that is, but I've heard several, several people said this, and even on the news and stuff, that the police force here were formed initially to catch slaves. If I'm wrong, hit me up in the comment section. I haven't read that anywhere, but I've heard several like politicians and activists see the see such a thing. That's how the police force was formed here in this country. All right, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed watching it. Thank you all for suggesting this for me. Keep suggesting the videos. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this video, so who haven't seen it before could go check it out. The thing, you know what I mean, and. Uh, Comment down below, man. Uh, tell me about the other divisions of police uh, forces in uh, in Canada because somebody said there's a marked difference between, you know, the several sections of them. You know what I mean? And, uh, man, I hope you guys are having a, a great day. And you all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.